Hello everyone, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, and welcome to a competition. Yes, on the one hand we have the Saturn V, the American-made rocket, and on the other side we have the Superior Soviet Russian N1 moon rocket. And we are going to be putting these two craft head-to-head -head in a battle, see who can get to the moon and back first, and talk about some of the specs and all that stuff, but let's get this right underway. Three, two, one and go 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 so then we have the two rockets now blasting off the saturn 5 firing its five f1 engines or the mastodon engines uh which are the kerbal analog and the n1 firing 30 engines yes the n1 is a genius craft with 30 engines now both of these guys are underway the saturn 5 is taking a little bit of an early lead right now just starting to pitch over Maneuver and uh, the N1 is still just going strong, going straight up, just crossing about 1.7 kilometers, 2 kilometers, and it's starting its own pitch over maneuver. The N1 block A bottom stage is just depleted now and is fired up. The block B, which is uh, what is the N1 second stage, the N1 uses blocks instead of stage, weird, but N1 is definitely winning the sound game, but the Saturn V is definitely way ahead in the altitude game as it just finishes up its bottom stage. Now it is firing its second stage, uh, which consists of five skiff or J2 engine. This combined produces 1.15 million pounds of thrust, or that's 5,400 kilonewtons for uh, normal people. The Saturn V is pretty much just flying flat now as it crosses 60 kilometers. N1 still barely crossing 20 kilometers. It's just pointing very vertically, or near vertical or probably closer to 30 degrees but either way there goes the saturn 5 finishing the second stage now it's on the s4b stage which is powered by one singular j2 engine or the uh curb analog which is the skiff it has now finished its burn and now it's going to be planning its trans its uh, orbital insertion burn rather as the n1 just finishes its staging now and then fires up block v on the n1 um, because the Soviets are very smart and they called it Block A, then Block B, then Block V for some reason. And the Block V is powered by a, a four NK-21 engines, or Poodle engines in KSP. While that is happening, the Saturn V has gotten itself into orbit now. It's going to start planning its translunar injection to bring three Kerbals out to the Mun. At the same time, the N1 is still... Still uh, steaming along, trying to get itself into orbit, still not quite there, but it's pretty close to orbital velocity as it's through 52 kilometers. And then very soon it'll be able to cut its engine and then do a circularization burn. Now I'm just about to deplete the stage on the N1 and then it will fire up its next stage, also known as a Block G, which has one singular engine and will propel the, uh, the spacecraft out to the MUN. And then circularize ourselves around the MUN, just pop in the fairing now on the N1 and we can see the amazing payload we have on there we have the lander the lk as it's known as which is encased in that fairing which are just going to deploy in a second there it goes while that's happening the saturn 5 is on doing its translunar injection burn of about 850 meters a second to get its orbit raised to about the month's height the s4b or the third stage is doing that burn once that burn is completed the stage will be depleted and then we'll be able to discard it and then the apollo command and service module will do the circularization burn around the MUN and then we'll deploy the lander. The uh, N1 is quite a ways behind, but it's still hoping to get back into this race, so it's getting ready to do its orbital insertion burn right now with block G, and then it will get ready to do its translunar injection. All these two craft are now heading on out. I would like to quickly say thank you guys very much for all the subs, it's been going great. Uh, if you're interested in subscribing, feel free. Also, uh, I do have a Discord, and we're starting some challenges. You can uh, see more information about that in the Discord if you are interested. But that's my very quick plug aside, we are get back to the race now. We're going to be decoupling the uh, lunar, the uh, sorry, the command module for the Saturn V, or the Apollo spacecraft now. And it will be doing its uh, reorganizing, realigning, re whatever it's going to be docking. So um, basically, what they do is they have the uh, command module and the uh, lander. They dock back up, and then we'll uh, jettison that third stage. We do it reconfiguring. The N1 does not do this maneuver. Uh, well, it's you know the, the the lander and the 
command module actually physically can't dock together more than once. So if they docked and do it, did a reconfiguring, they wouldn't have been able to do a rendezvous uh, in uh, when the lander comes back for the month. So the N1 has an opportunity to catch up now as it uh, is doing its translunar injection burn. Unfortunately, it's powered by the one Cheetah engine that is a very weak engine, so it's not going to be getting as far as it would like to be. It looks like the Saturn V is just finishing up its uh, uh, reconfiguration. did have a little bit of a janky docking, so that was a little bit sketchy for it, but it's been able to recapture its strong lead. I'm just pumping the monoprop now into the command pod, just so we can top it off. Uh, because the, or sorry, I'm pumping the monoprop into the lunar lander, uh, because the lunar, the monoprop is its only means of uh, orienting itself when it doesn't have its engine firing. So that if we run out of monoprop, that lander is dead. So pretty important stuff to have now. The N1 is doing its correction burnout to the moon, still quite a ways behind the Apollo spacecraft now. Its hopes of catching up seemingly are diminished, at least for the current moment. Just detaching the lander now of the Saturn V, or it is the Apollo spacecraft now, and just getting ready to do our MUN landing. So it looks like the uh, Apollo people are in a pretty good position, or the Americans are in a pretty good position to get to the MUN first and plant the American flag before the Soviets can plant their flag. Now the Soviets are doing their circularization burn around the MUN with that Cheetah engine, and that will deplete that stage, and then we'll be able to stage that away, and then we'll get the lander out, and it will do its landing on the MUN. Transfer the one crew into the lander. The Soviets only landed one peop one person on the moon or one cosmonaut. Uh, it was a two-person mission. Rather, the uh, two people would launch on the N1. Uh, the Saturn V has three astronauts. Two of them would go to the surface of the moon and one would stay in orbit. The Soviets and one only has one cosmonaut going to the moon versus two astronauts. Now we're looking at the Apollo lander just coming in now to land. Go full screen on it right now. Just coming in, coming for a nice smooth landing. Got plenty of Delta V left, nothing to worry about. We are all looking good, and it looks like the Americans have made it to the surface first. So now we're going to EVA one of our Kerbals, who's going to get outside of the lander and get a, play, a flag planted, and that will get its position solidified as the first to the MUN. But that is not the whole challenge. They need to get back first in order to win. So this is only half the battle. They need to hurry up and get that flag planted pretty quick here. Just to uh, not lose any time to the Soviets who are going to be, they have their lander already detached, so they're going to be doing their landing burn right now. Or they're close to landing burn, so these guys could, if the Soviets are quick, they could definitely have an opportunity to retake the lead at this point in the mission. Now it's going to name the flag, and the Americans... Americans are just going to put a pretty generic name. They're feeling like they're in pretty good position. They think they're winning, so they're kind of dilly-dallying. You don't want to ever take your position for granted, though. you got to get back in the lander very soon here. Come on, Kerbal. I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm the one who filmed all this. But either way, looks like we can check back up on the Soviets who are coming in to land now. They are just a little bit above the surface, just over a kilometer up. And while that happens, the Americans are looking to begin their rendezvous procedure and their departure procedure, which is going to happen right about now. Maybe now. There it goes. That's detaching the bottom stage of the lander, and now the top stage is going to fly off. I do apologize for the little mistake with the lander. Uh, the, uh, you know, there's the weird, like, skirt at the bottom, which does not exist in real life. That was more bad. Now I can check back in on the Soviets, which are pretty much already at the surface little bit chunkier of a landing than the Americans, but that's how we do this in Soviet Russia. Now we're just landed, now we're going to get ready to deploy the solar panel because we are solar powered today in the LK, is what the lunar lander was called, I already said that, but anyway, the Apollo lander was powered by fuel cells, so we're going to really have to hurry up here now, plant that Soviet flag and get the crap out of here. All right, come on, stay up, Kerbal. We gotta hurry up. Gotta hurry up. So he's gonna stop right here, and then we're going to put the flag down and get the mighty superior Soviet flag. Uh, I should not do Russian accents anymore. And we'll get it. This guy are less confident about their position. They think they're losing, which in fact they are. So they're gonna need to hurry up and catch back up with the rest of the. 
or the other competitor. There are not a lot of there. The rest of them, the rest of them are one. It looks like the competitor is getting ready to do its docking. It's going to dock in about one half orbit, so it's going to complete about a half an orbit before it does its rendezvous. But either way, the Soviets are now taking off, getting ready to do their rendezvous. Now, the Soviets do have one little advantage here in the fact that their rendezvous is a little bit easier because, uh, like I said, the lunar lander for uh, the Americans, for the Apollo, uh, only is controllable through RCS uh, engines or monoprop engines, so its ability to orient itself is a little bit lessened uh, because uh, the Soviets, they have reaction wheels on there so they can orient themselves much easier. But it looks like the Apollo people still have the Apollo people. I don't know what to call them. The Saturn V, the American. We'll, we'll call them everything. But they are, looks like they have their rendezvous approaching its completion. And now I can move into the docking phase. I'm being very careful with the amount of mana prop I have on that lunar lander because if it runs out, we are done for. Now I'm just going to switch up to the command module, do the superior lounge lazy method of docking. Um, as everyone knows, hopefully everyone knows, it's a great math method of docking. Check it out. Check out, you know, Matt Lund. If you don't know Matt Lund, you should. Now, it looks like the Soviets have managed to catch up in their docking. Let's see if who can dock first. It looks like the Americans are going to win. There we go. Um, but the Russians are not far behind. They're aligning the docking ports, and there they go. Now it's just a matter of seeing who can get back first. Both people, I believe, have ditched their landers. Now they're planning their return burn. Looks like they are both pretty much neck and neck at this point. Just a matter of who has a better thrust rate ratio on the engine. It looks like it probably will be the Americans because they have that massive, 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 massive Wolfhound engine. Very efficient engine, too. As you can see, the Soviet burn is taking much, 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 much longer. These guys are going to be losing. The Americans are now all back in the upper atmosphere, deploying their command pod, getting the heat shield oriented towards the airstream, and they're going to start their re-entry now. It looks like they are just going to crossfade now to the um, landing. They're going to get ready to deploy their chutes, and I made a big mistake with the Soviets. I detached their command pod, and I left a Kerbal in there, so he has to quickly EVA out and re um, get himself back into his spacecraft while that is happening the Americans have deployed their drogue chute and now their three main parachutes they have their parachutes out and now we're gonna get into the final home stretch of the race can the Soviets just smash themselves face first through the atmosphere and try and beat the Americans they're coming in basically vertically kind of a last ditch effort to get ahead as the Americans are slowly slowly gliding down towards the surface the G meters you can see on the Russians is really getting up there, really getting off them. But they're they're strong Kerbonauts. Kerbonauts. They are very they're very tough. They can handle like 50 Gs. Coming through 10 kilometers now. The Apollo command pod is now at 600 meters. Who is going to get there first? Soviets are feeling brave. They're going to try and pop their shoot at the last second. Try and take an, a late advantage over the Americans as we come into the final seconds of the race. Yep, Soviets just not coming through three kilometers. Americans are much lower, but the, the Soviets wait to deploy their chute. There's a chance they could overtake them in this final stretch of of the competition. Who will win? They're getting ready to deploy their chutes now in any second. There they go. The two main chutes are out for the Soviets. They're fully deployed now. Just going to judge us in the heat shield. Now it's just a waiting game to see who is going to get to the surface first. It could be a pretty close one. It's actually pretty hard to tell the depth perception on the uh, on the Apollo one because you can't really see the shadows. But either way, they are both coming down. Soviets seem to be falling a little bit faster, maybe one and a half meters a second faster because they have uh, one less shoot. The Apollo has three. The Soviets have two. Soviets now just descending through 150 meters as we speak. They are less than 30 seconds away from the ground. How far is Apollo? Who is going to win? It could be a close one, guys. It is going to maybe be a close one. I do not know. We will see who is going to win. Soviets just coming through 50 meters, 40 meters, 30 meters, 20 meters, 10 meters. Splashdown. And it looks like the Soviets have done it with their superior re-entry skills. They were losing pretty much this entire race, but took a late advantage at the end. Let's see how the Apollo people are doing. 
Oh, they are they are still up there, aren't they? Let's uh Wow. That was pretty embarrassing. That's what happens when you take your Kerbal's health too seriously. But they have made it. And that brings us to the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed. A little bit of a different video for me today. But I hope you did enjoy it nonetheless. I have some cards up in the screen, hopefully. So I'd like to thank you for watching. See you next time. Please write or comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.